everyone, it's Sarah and today I am back to do another subscriber requested video. So this one was requested a while ago and I finally just got, I, I make a list anytime somebody request, requests a video, I have a list that I keep kind of running and I just finally got to this one on the list. So. Um, yeah, so today we are going to be talking about buttery perfumes in my collection. I didn't think that I had as many buttery fragrances in my collection as I do, but as I, when I really started thinking about it, I was like, oh yeah, that one and that one and that one. I was just thinking of a million different fragrances that smell really buttery to me. So anyways, I've got a pretty good mix here and I'm going to jump right in. The first one that I'm going to start with is this one here. This is Ely Saab Girl of Now. and a lot of the time I think of this fragrance as smelling kind of syrupy, but it actually smells more buttery than syrupy. Um, oh gosh. This is so beautiful. It's orange blossom and pistachio and almond, and it is beautiful. It definitely does smell syrupy, but it smells buttery. I guess it's the way that the, the nuts and the orange blossom are interacting. It just gives it this really beautiful butteriness. And sometimes buttery and syrupy can be interchangeable, but yeah, it's it's just a really beautiful one. This was one of the first ones that came to my mind when I thought of buttery perfumes in my collection because it's so, it really is. It's too thick to be, I don't know, sometimes when I think of fragrances like this, I think of nectar but it's too thick to be like a nectar. It's more, it's more of like a buttery, syrupy fragrance. So yeah, that is Ely Saab Girl of Now. Such a stunner of a perfume. This next one that I have actually has a butter note in it. So this is definitely, this is probably the most buttery perfume that I've got in my collection. This is Guerlain Mon Exclusif and this is sadly this has been discontinued which I won't even spray even one spray to just smell it this one is it smells like Mon Guerlain but it is sweeter and it's buttery it's a buttery Mon Guerlain it still has all of the notes or a lot of the same notes that you find in Mon Guerlain it's got the lavender and I think it's got the fern in it still but it's got a butter or a salted butter no I can't remember which one if it's just butter or salted butter I want to say it's salted butter but yeah beautiful it definitely is the most buttery perfume I've got in my collection or close to it I think one of the I have one other perfume on this list that is, it's so stinking buttery. It's pretty close, but it doesn't have a butter note in it that I know of. But anyways, that is a Guerlain Mon Exclusive. Beautiful. Okay, next we've got this one here. This is an imaginary author's fragrance, and this is called Yesterday Haze. And this does not have butter in it, but it's got fig and whipped cream, and it's got a walnut note in it. And something about how the notes are combined or are blended, it smells incredibly buttery. It smells like, I mean, you can picture some kind of a yummy fig dessert in some kind of a buttery pastry topped with whipped cream. That's what I think of every time I smell this perfume. It's such a stunning buttery fig fragrance. It's amazing. I love it. I never hear anybody talk about this perfume either. I feel like it's super, super underrated. That one is Yesterday Haze from Imaginary Authors. Next, I've got a juicy fragrance. I Every time I spray this perfume, I feel like it smells really buttery. This is Viva La Juicy Gold Couture. And this is Viva La Juicy with a ton of caramel in it but it's like a buttery caramel. It's definitely, uh, yeah, it's a buttery caramel. It's definitely a really beautiful, thick, sweet, buttery caramel fragrance. I love it. This is one of the first ones that came to mind too is when I started thinking about buttery fragrances, I was like, oh my gosh, Gold Couture is definitely a sweet, buttery caramel fragrance. I love it, but it still has that Viva La Juicy DNA. So it still smells like Viva La Juicy, but it's, oof, it's, um, a thick, rich, 
buttery caramel version. So anyways, that is Viva La Juicy Gold Couture from Juicy Couture. Next, I've got a couple of Dua fragrances. The first one, this one is, this is another one that is incredibly buttery. It, I don't think it's got a butter note in it, but it could. Um, this is called Caramel Palm Delight from Dua. And this is, this is a combination of Zerjoff Lira and Killian Apple Brandy. Zerjoff Lira is a very buttery smelling perfume to me as well. So that's, I guess it's the Lira part of this that is very buttery, but it smells like a buttery caramel apple. That's part of why I love this one so much because it's got so much depth. It doesn't just smell like an apple perfume or, um, or even just like a caramel apple perfume. It smells like a buttery caramel apple perfume. It's so good. It's, this one might be my favorite apple fragrance in my collection. Maybe that I've ever smelled. It's so good. There's something about, basically just imagine Lyra, but add some Granny Smith apple to it. That's what it smells like. It is amazing. It is like one of my fall go-tos every year. And I get tons of compliments on this. And I just picked up a lotion from Goose Creek that I am gonna layer my apple perfumes over and I'm super excited. It's a caramel apple lotion. So I'm just super excited for fall to get here so I can start wearing it. So anyways, that is Caramel Palm Delight from Dua. Stunning, very buttery caramel apple. And then next is this one here. This is the Dark Chocolate Rum and Vanilla fragrance from Dua. This is Gourmand Coquine from Guerlain. It's a dupe of, or a clone of Gourmand Co Coquine from Guerlain. This is a very buttery fragrance too. Don't get me wrong, it is a boozy fragrance because it's got that beautiful rum in it. But there's something about, there's something about how the chocolate and the vanilla mix together with the booziness of the rum that give it this beautiful, buttery, chocolate smell. And that's exactly what it is. It's like a buttery chocolate perfume. There's something about how the rum um, interacts with everything too that helps to give it this butteriness. I don't know, it's hard to explain, but it's definitely a buttery a fragrance. Um, this is another one that I immediately thought of uh, when I thought of buttery. It smells, it's amazing. So anyways, that is dark chocolate vanilla and, or sorry, dark chocolate rum and vanilla or a clone of Guerlain Gourmand Coquine. This one has gotten so much better as it's aged as well. It's, it's just getting better and better as it ages. So yeah, it's amazing. Next, this is another one that is a very buttery fragrance to me. This is from the Maison Lancome line and this one is called Jasmine's Marzipan and this is another fragrance that has always smelled incredibly buttery to me. Ah, uh, yes. This one's definitely more, this one's definitely more of a buttery floral, but buttery floral is definitely what it is. And I've always felt like that with this one. This one is super sweet. It's a little tiny bit vintage leaning, really, really buttery jasmine. Ah, uh, it's stunning. But this one definitely does lean just a touch um, beautiful, like a buttery floral fragrance. So anyways, that is Jasmine's Marzipan from Maison Lancome. Okay, this next one, I oh, every time I talk about this fragrance, I talk about how I can smell other things in it, even though it's only got, um, it's only got a couple notes listed. Yeah, it's only got a few notes listed, but this is another one of the most buttery smelling fragrances in my collection. And that is Lancome, another Lancome, <laughs> another Maison Lancome, I should say, uh, fragrance. This is called Lavon's Trianon. And this, it only, it just says, um, Lavande Fine Essence, Lavande Absolu, or in English, Lavender Fine Essence or and Lavender Absolu. And then Vigny, uh, Christine, Crystallize or crystallized vanilla. Now, I swear this has got something else in it or it's just, I guess, how the vanilla is blended or something. I don't know, but this is an incredibly buttery smelling fragrance. It's a buttery lavender and vanilla fragrance. That's why it's got so much body. Um, 
I've never smelled such a strong vanilla and lavender fragrance that smells so rich and so thick and buttery smelling. But this thing is an absolute beast. This fragrance is nuclear on me. I only have to spray two or three sprays and I am good. I, I wear it to bed a ton. Um, but yeah, even when I wear it throughout the day, it's just, it's a nuclear fragrance. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. And again, one of the most buttery fragrances in my collection. This one can hold its own next to Guerlain Mon Exclusive, which actually has a butter note in it. This one is easily is as buttery as that one, which is crazy because I don't know what, what is making it so buttery, but it definitely is. So anyways, that is Lavon's Trianon from Lancome. I adore it. Okay, next is this one here. This is YSL Libre Intense, the Intense formulation. I feel like they all kind of have a butteriness to them, but not like the Intense. And I think that that's why I love the Intense version so much because it's so warm and buttery smelling. And it really is buttery smelling. This is another one that I think a lot of the time I describe it as smelling syrupy, but it's not syrupy, it's buttery. It's, you can smell the texture for sure. It's amazing. This is one of my favorite perfumes of life. I will never not be with a bottle of this. Thank gosh I have two bottles of it because somebody sent me a bottle that they, they just didn't care for it and so they sent it to me and I am, I can't even tell you how happy I, in fact this is the bottle that they sent. <laughs> I'm so happy to have a backup of this because I love it so much and that's why I love it because it is warm and sweet and buttery smelling, which is like my favorite combination ever. So anyways, that is why I sell Libre Intense. It's a stunner. Okay, next, this one, I swear this has got a butter note in it. <laughs> I don't think it does, but it smells, this smells like buttery pastry to me. This is Zara, a sweet pastry in Paris. And look how dark my liquid has gotten. It definitely was not that dark when I first got it. It was more of like a light yellow and now I guess from all of the vanilla in it, it has just darkened up so much. But this, and I, I've always said that I can smell a buttery pastry note in this. This is lemon, but this is more, to me, this is more about a buttery pastry note than it even is lemon. It's like a sweet lemon, but man, it's buttery. Again, one of the most buttery fragrances in my collection. It's like sweet lemon and buttery pastry, really. And the, what's funny is that buttery pastry translates on the skin. It doesn't like disappear. It doesn't, um, I don't know, it translates onto the skin. So yeah, sadly this, I wish that Zara would not discontinue their most popular fragrances. Everybody loved this fragrance. Everybody wanted to get their hands on a bottle. And I don't know why they discontinue them. And then they'll keep stuff that, you know, isn't that great. It's like, just make and sell your gems. Like, make and sell your hits and get rid of the ones that are not that great, you know? Like, I don't know why they do it. But anyways, yeah, that is Zara, a sweet pastry in Paris. Amazing buttery lemon. Okay, this next one, this is another buttery floral, and this is another one that I often describe as smelling syrupy, but it's actually buttery. It's much more buttery than syrupy. And this is Kim Kardashian Pure Honey, and that's exactly what this is. This is a buttery floral. And the butteriness comes from the honey because, because it is such a syrupy, like realistic smelling honey, but it's super buttery with the florals. The way that it's blended with the white florals and the honey, like a really beautiful, realistic honey, it's an incredibly buttery floral. Next time I go to describe these perfumes as syrupy, I need to stop and remind myself that they're not syrupy, they're buttery. And I guess I didn't even think about them in that way until I started thinking about what perfumes I have in my collection that are buttery. and. 
Yeah, I started pulling them and I was like, these are not syrupy, they're buttery perfumes. Take a shot every time I say buttery. <laughs> it's a drinking game. You'll be lit by the end of this. So anyways, that is Kim Kardashian Pure Honey. This is such an underrated gem of a fragrance. Um, this is one of those, it's like $13 for a bottle and it smells so much more expensive than it is and it's such a good quality celebrity scent. Gosh, it's amazing. So anyways, again, Kim Kardashian Pure Honey, amazing. Okay, this next one, this is a discontinued Ganache Parfums fragrance, but this is another one. I don't know where the butteriness comes from in this, but it is buttery. And I actually, I probably have more Ganache fragrances that actually have a butter note in them. I think I do. This one is called Marshmallows and Incense. And this is is an incredibly buttery perfume. I mean, it smells like it has a butter note in it. It might, I can't find the notes for this anymore. They might have it on Fragrantica. If I can find the notes for this and they have it listed in Fragrantica, I'll definitely have it on the screen for you. And it may have a butter note in it, but it's amazing. It's a very, very soft, incense it's not like a church incense it's not um it's not like a hippie incense it's just like a very light soft incense and like a gooey marshmallow note but the incense really really grounds the marshmallow so it doesn't even smell like a marshmallow but you get the texture of the, mar the marshmallow so it ends up being just this really beautiful buttery fragrance it's amazing. I love this. It doesn't last very long on the skin. Um, and because it's been discontinued and I've got such a huge dent in this already, but because it's been discontinued, um, I just don't wear it often, but I love it. Yeah, it's sad. It's going to be really, really difficult to come by some of these ganache fragrances again. And it's funny, mine, um, something leaked in the box that this came in and that's actually the bubble wrap that um that's another thing i need to write with a sharpie on this what it is i've got a couple of these that are like this that if i didn't know in my mind what they were i would have no idea because it doesn't have a name on it anywhere but yeah that is marshmallow and incense it might have a butter note in it we'll see Okay, next I've got this one here. This is Commodity Oris, and I mean, Oris is a butter, so. Oh man. So yeah, that is a stunning, buttery Oris fragrance. Oh, it's amazing. It's like, if you think of an iris, which I've got another iris perfume in here. If you think of an iris perfume, like a really beautiful, um, kind of sweet, one of the more heavy iris perfumes, and you think of what it smells like when it dries down, just the base of it, that's what this smells like. It smells like a sweet, like straight to the base of an iris perfume. It's amazing, I love this. I'm so happy I found this. This one, um, yeah, this is the original formulation. I don't know if it's been reformulated or not, but I found this secondhand, I think on Mercari, and I snatched it because, oh, I love it. It's so good. If you like Iris, if you like, and it doesn't smell, well, it smells a little bit like Iris, but it's more of like the base of an Iris fragrance, just the buttery part. It's stunning. It's a buttery Oris fragrance. So anyways, that is Commodity Oris. Speaking of Iris perfumes, I've got this one here. This is Boucheron uh, Iris de Syracuse, and this is a beautiful, sweet, but light, buttery Iris. Oh gosh, it's stunning. I feel like most Iris fragrances smell buttery, in my opinion. I've got one I've got one iris fragrance, the Victoria Minya iris fragrance, that to me does not smell buttery at all. It's the only iris fragrance I think that I maybe have ever smelled that doesn't smell buttery. But this one is different. This one is sweet and it is light, but it is very, very buttery, especially in the dry down. It's just beautiful. 
So anyways, that is Iris to Syracuse from Boucheron. I won't talk about it too much since it's an Iris. Okay, and then last but not least, I have this one here. This is Lush Rentless, and oh my gosh, this is stunning. This is kind of spiced, but mostly resinous, but it's like a buttery resin. It's not, and this is gonna sound really crazy, it's not an overly resinous, resinous perfume. It's a buttery resinous, it's a sweet, buttery, resinous fragrance. I love it so much. Um, it's funny, I almost didn't pick this up. I found it secondhand on Mercari. In fact, another fragrance reviewer um, had this for sale that I bought it from. And, but somebody had told me that, that I had to try this perfume because it was just incredible in the dry down and it's just incredible in every stage of it. It's incredible in the bottle. It's incredible when you first spray it on. It's incredible in the dry down. I think that this is my favorite Lush fragrance, hands down. Yeah, it definitely is. It's the best Lush perfume I've ever smelled. And I think I've smelled, well, no, I haven't smelled. A lot of the ones that were only available in Europe for a long time, I haven't smelled those ones, but, oh my gosh, I love this. It's a buttery resinous fragrance, if you can imagine that. It's amazing. So anyways, that is Lush Rentless. And that is gonna be it, guys. I think I probably have more. I probably have enough of these in my collection that I could do a part two. Um, if I do, I will do a part two because yeah, I've got a lot of buttery fragrances, like more than I even knew. Um, but anyways, I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. It helps me out so much. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I will see you in my next one. Bye.